Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. They said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple, whom Jesus loved, said to Peter, It is the Lord! As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, It is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you've just caught. Simon Peter climbed aboard and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153. But even though so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread, and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? He answered, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, Take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, Do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, Feed my sheep. Here ends the reading of the good news. Let us pray. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Many of you know that our oldest daughter, Jenna, is a senior at Hamlin University in St. Paul. And so, if the wheels don't fall off this semester, come May, she'll be graduating. She'll be wiser and smarter and ready to take on the world. It's amazing how quickly we've gone from that freshman orientation weekend to being fitted with a cap and gown, the two bookends of a college career. In a similar way, we see the beginning and the ending of a very important period of learning for Simon Peter and the rest of the disciples in our two gospel readings today. In the one, he is called or enrolled in school, if you will, and in the second, He is graduating. He is being sent out to make a difference in the world. Let's take a little bit closer look at these stories. The people crowd around Jesus to hear him in Luke's Gospel, and so he takes advantage of the natural amphitheater of the waterfront, a beach, and calm water, and puts out in a boat where his voice will carry across the water. And after teaching the crowds, he says to Peter, let's go fishing. Now, it doesn't say this in the gospel, but I imagine Peter is extremely tired after having been out all night. And we also know that he could be a bit of a hothead at times. So I imagine him saying, listen here, you son of a carpenter. We went out all night and caught nothing. What do you know about fishing? and we've just rinsed all the muck out of our necks. (sighs) Yeah, okay, I'll take you out for a little while. And instantly, they have the miraculous catch of fish. And Peter is overwhelmed. Whoa, hold on, I don't deserve this. I'm not a very nice guy, you know. I'm not worthy. And this power of yours, it's kind of scary. Don't be afraid. From now on, you'll be catching people. And they left 
everything and followed him. Thus begins the story of Peter as student and Jesus as his Bible teacher. And there are lots and lots of lessons that Jesus will teach as we follow Jesus and his disciples through the Gospels. He will teach them about God and God's love. He will teach them about grace and mercy. He will teach them about faith and healing and forgiveness. And for at least three years, maybe a little longer, Jesus holds class and Peter is there. Peter's not an A student. He gets a lot of things wrong, but he is passionate about learning and about following Jesus. And we know that this relationship between Jesus and Peter grew very close. You may remember that Peter is from the word in the Greek, Petros, which means rock. So his name was Simon, but his nickname was Rocky. And that's how Jesus refers to him, is Rocky. They have a tight relationship, these two. But in just a few short days in Jerusalem, there is the Last Supper, the Garden of Gethsemane, the betrayal by Judas, the arrest, and then the denial by Peter himself. I tell you, I don't know the man. The cock crows, and Jesus dies on the cross. Suddenly, their teacher is gone. How horrible, how devastating, how awful was that day. All of us know what that's like to lose somebody we love. We've all had those losses, and it hits us very hard. So we can understand how depressed and how lost Peter and the rest of the disciples must have felt on that day that we call Good Friday. And then on the first day of the week, on that Sunday, comes the news. Jesus isn't dead. He's alive. And they want to believe, but they can't quite grasp it. They can't quite understand. Peter and the disciples don't know what this means. And so, in the midst of that time of uncertainty, Peter turns to some of his friends and he says, I'm going fishing. I'm going back to what I know. I'm going back to what I used to do. We'll go with you. And thus begins the deja vu story that I read from John. They fish all night, and Jesus from the shore asks if they have any fish, and they don't recognize him. No. Try the right side. Rocky's a little slow to pick up on what happens, but John knows. He remembers that first day, the calling, and he says, it's the Lord. And Rocky <laughs> jumps in. You think he'd sink, but his joy carries him all the way to shore. <clears throat> and there's the breakfast waiting. After they finish eating comes the final exam, comes the test. Rocky? Do you love me? You bet I do. Jesus has asked him with the Greek word agape, do you love me, which is the most sacrificial kind of love there is, the deepest love, the love that always puts the other first. Do you love me? And Peter responds with phileo, I love you like a brother. Friendship love. Jesus knows that, of course. But he wants Peter to really commit. He asks him three times the same question. And he has the same response each time. Feed my sheep. Care for my lambs. Feed them. It's graduation day. This is what your education was for, Peter. I told you you would be fishing for people. You don't get to go back to your old way of life. You have been changed because you have known me. Use what you've been taught. There is a mission. It is my mission, and I want you to be a part of it. Go make a difference in the world, Peter. I have blessed you so you might be a blessing. Here's the transition. 
Here's the so what. Why do these stories matter to us this day? Well, you and I are like Peter. You and I have been called. We have sat at the feet of Jesus and been taught, and he has blessed us. Each of us have been given special gifts, like lures for a tackle box, the gift of God's presence in our life is there for a reason. Not for us to keep new and boxed up and put away, but to open and use in the world. You and I have been given a mission. And that mission is to share the love of Christ with everyone everywhere. To make a difference in the world. To help you do just that, I want to remind you of a very simple way that we can take action. In your bulletin today is a TAN insert. It may have gotten used at the early service, but if you have one there, it's all about a small sacrifice that you can make every month to make sure that somebody who is hungry is fed. I went through and chose levels of giving that you could commit to that are easily attainable. Giving up one soda or one cup of coffee a month. Giving up a burger a month. A pizza, a bucket of chicken. Do you know that if 20 individuals or families from our congregation sign up for each of those things, we'll have nearly $9,000 in additional giving to fight world hunger? It's great on this day, Super Bowl Sunday, that we join our efforts with churches all over this nation that we give food items to the food pantry, that we give financial gifts that go to the food pantry and to fight world hunger. But people are hungry 365 days a year. And so this is one way that we can unite our hearts and take action that makes a difference in the lives of people, a difference in the world. It's only one example of the kinds of ministry that we're called to as a church to care for the physical needs of people, and to care for spiritual needs. And that's why we challenge you to unite together, to pool our gifts and our resources. It's why we send money off to the ELCA office in Chicago that then distribute it to new mission starts and to missionaries all over the world and to all kinds of important ministries that we couldn't accomplish on our own. Jesus calls us again today. And when we hear the call, when we really hear the call, it changes us. It inspires us. It lets us know that we are forgiven for the ways we fail and we are empowered to go forward because Jesus expects net results. Let us again today remind ourselves that when he calls, we are to respond. Here I am. Send me. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You may remain seated as we sing together our hymn of the day. Here I am, Lord, number 574. <laughs> 